got some really interesting words here where is it um this one which kind of got me thinking about the um the importance of having cheerleaders friends of yours working in the press too you can kind of um when they get asked to comment on you as a person they're able to really big you up in a way that's a little bit delusional but it's also sincere and also acts as a great way for people to kind of um judge your character right because usually i think you know you can tell, tell a lot about people by the way they treat obviously service workers and also by the way that their friends describe them and i think this little excerpt courtesy of the cut where um sorry um what's her name oh what's the fucking white lady's name i follow on fucking social media uh, what's her name what is her name where is she do Cat Marnell, that's the one, Cat Marnell. Yeah, Cat. So Cat Marnell here had some um, really interesting words to say about Julia Fox that I really liked. So the, mo the following um, at the bottom here, right? It says, um, asked to respond to Fox's busy week. Cat Marnell, who's been friends with the actress since Fox was a teenager, texted me the following. Julia Fox is doper than Pete Davidson, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West combined, which is a big statement to make, right? She's legitimate sorceress. She's the Michael Jordan of Vixens. <laughs> I love the guest. She's devastating like a hurricane. And then she kept on going. If she, if she became a legit minivan majority known household name as is happening right now, it will be the greatest thing to ever happen in my lifetime. I fucking love that bad bitch. Julia Fox is the Camille Pagler wet dream. Fox herself texted me and said the overall message is that if you're in a toxic relationship, get out of it because you never know who you know. You never know who. Yeah, because you never know. Because who never know who what's the thing hold on let's say the overall message is that if you're in a toxic relationship get out of it because you never who know or what could be waiting for you on the other side of course, you never know who could be waiting for you on the other side okay some good message there overall but the gas is supreme it looks like all the white art hoes in new york city are loving it because i guess she's a bit of a star in their own little you know um sphere that they live in um she obviously has a lot of friends so she's obviously a cool person it seems like despite the fame and whatnot and maybe generally this is kind of a new york cinderella story right this is a downtown new york art ho cinderella story where the bit larger than life you know artist or famous person comes down to your little local scene and plucks one of your um you know seen hotties and takes them up to the highest of highs um i've seen some people debating whether or not you know this could have been dasha from red scare but i doubt it she doesn't have enough junk in the trunk probably for kanye but still it's an interesting thing to see um play out again in public and then if you're wondering oh this doesn't make any sense why they're together blah 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 i think this little video from this lady that i found on twitter which basically surmises and rounds up what julia fox is about is a good explanation as to why they're probably a lot more um aligned and compatible to each other than you'd actually would be led to believe so this is courtesy of twitter by a lady called Beyonce, but i'm gonna play it here it's a tiktok video some girl made basically summarizing who julia fox is as a person and as an artist okay so everyone is obsessed with julia fox right now the woman who is dating kanye west who is she? We don't really know besides the like hot uncut gems actress. So I took it upon myself to do a motherfucking deep dive on the internet and the stuff that this woman has done. While she was still in high school, she was a dominatrix. She made a film titled Fantasy Girls that was based on the true story of her and her friend discovering a prostitution ring and uncovering it on a road trip to Reno. She released two photo books they both include very explicit photos of her, not only sexually, but also photos of her getting abused physically, the aftermath of that, um, and also like screenshots of emails and texts of men emotionally abusing her. So she's like always been like very like outwardly vulnerable. Like every photo of her pre-2018 is like very explicit. And I think that this was done on purpose. Her Tumblr username was reverse cowgirl69, iconic behavior. Okay, so in 2019, um, Julia threw an art show called Called R.I.P. Julia Fox and it's confusing whether or not she literally staged her own death or just like really leaned into it for the art show. Every photo from this art show um, was painted with her own blood. She extracted the blood with a syringe and then painted onto silk. I would show you guys but community guidelines. 
She's definitely a girl that's like been through a lot, but I feel like she's so unfazed by all this new attention she's getting from Kanye. I feel like she's really been manifesting this for a while. She is mother to this beautiful baby boy. She's very, very unapologetically gone off on her dead baby daddy publicly on numerous occasions. Um, I really like her. I think she's smart. I think she's outspoken and I'm excited to see what she does with this new like level of fame. So yeah, in case you're wondering who she is, that is your summary. And uh, another reminder of just how important of a role TikTok is playing in culture nowadays, especially with their short format. Um, I've heard of people basically saying that they've completely shifted their um, food porn con their food porn consumption to TikTok. People don't necessarily even check YouTube because you always get those fucking intros of like hi guys and all that sort of shit same stuff that i do basically and people just are a bit too long-winded but obviously with the format only allowing you to what post up to two minute videos or whatnot um and you have to cut them down really and edit them and whatnot you you, you just get to the heart of the matter if you want to make a particular salad or a particular whatever dressing whatever you want to make you get just the details um what you need to get going and none of the fraff so maybe that kind of has extended now to other parts of culture in terms of art and whatnot bloody blah, blah 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 so that was pretty cool summary there from that young lady and again let's see what what comes of it innit? let's see what comes of it um it's a bit weird it's a bit random but again i think it's a welcome distraction from the day-to-day -day horrors that we have to kind of put up with especially when it comes to pandemic stuff like uh you know as much as it cringes me out to talk about people's relationship status and what they're doing hooking up and whatnot i don't really care um i still think it's a far better thing or a far more it feels like something that you should be doing especially considering the times that we're living in i think cons consist spending most of your time consuming pandemic like content or covid content it just isn't the vibe it really isn't so you know as cringy as it can be and as manipulative or as calculated as it does appear because it does appear quite calculative quite manipulative in some way shape or form right we're all kind of complicit in playing this massive sort of public get back game that Kanye is doing at the moment you know she's Kim's out with Pete she's he's out with Julius a little bit you know whatever I still would I still welcome its distraction I really do welcome its distraction 